surface is very different than what's up there. That was very, very um, uniform in size, just even visually. I could tell that it was pretty close to exactly the same size, or very, very near the same size. But here I can see the granules, so um, some you know, larger than sand particles, but very, very tiny pebbles, some larger pebbles. Um, we've got pebbles of all different kinds. We even have favorites, we've got mud class. So sometimes the crust forms on the top and it dries out and mud tends to stick together. And so it forms these little, uh, then the crust can break up either by wind, rain, or walking on it. And it forms these little pebbles that are just mud. So of course, um, you know, I can easily just break it up. But a lot of these actually end up staying together enough to be buried in the sand and they, we call them mud class. In fact, you can have something called a mud class conglomerate, where it's sand and mud class. It's pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna do. Um, yeah. Does not help when you get sand in your threads, as I have done here. Field equipment is always a little tricky. So if we were doing this um, for a scientific research project. Um, we would want to be a lot more careful about our sample size and try to get a large enough sample that would be representative. Normally we would get a, a pretty big sample, then we take it back to the lab, dry it out, and um, run it through what's called a sample splitter. And that would give us a, st a statistically representative um, sample where we sieve a smaller uh, amount than what we collected, because otherwise you end up with these large amounts of sand. So I'm just going to take a scoop off the top trying not to be um, choosy. I don't want to bias my sample. Okay, I'm going to pour it in the top here. Put my lid on. I'm going to keep sand in there, otherwise this can get stuck on permanently. That's good. Get my sample closer to the creek. <laughs> 